let's see as you can you you just have to trust your own language and and trust yourself and and hope that you that reading later what you've translated it, you don't find too many awful uh, mistakes this is sort of the core of my experience then of course um, to, to give a very concrete example um, there are you 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 can you can find um, bypasses for instance the verb voler the french verb voler that plays such a key role in the love of the medusa has in french uh, two senses that are related uh, but of course the germans uh, fliegen or stehlen uh, you would have to make a choice between uh, fliegen or stehlen uh, then and i mean this is a, a, a terrible amputation of of what is in in the text, but if the editor is uh, helpful and the the the, um, the editors are helpful and the editor yes, if everybody is helpful, then you you are allowed to, for instance, use fliegen und stehlen to to try and. <laughs> Which, which is, it doesn't, das ist überhaupt nicht selbstverständlich, natürlich. So, this kind of text asks for those kinds of people to allow these, es ist wie eine, eine List oder ein Bypasses. So this is what I mean. Thank you very much, sir. Um, you find us all very grateful that we have, um, yeah, that we have uh, a publisher also understanding that sometimes um, the commata, etc., they they should not be in the in the order um, as they are supposed to be by grammar. So, um, and this was, for example, to 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 give another uh, example out of our work together in line with the, um, the production pr of the Medusa volume. This was something uh, which we editors, I think, um, were deeply um, learning from you as a translator because you insisted, which we heard is a, an important word, um, so you insisted, for example, to have, um, have the commentators uh, in another order in the text, um, and we were uh, deeply impressed by this insistence and by that choice. So it was very important and a very important work for us um, to learn. Yes, yes, we know. <laughs> yes, we know. Yeah, that's right. Shall we open yeah. to the floor? What yeah. did you want to say? Right, then we take questions from the audience. No. <laughs> <laughs> there can be shouts, do you know? You can shout. <laughs> I have a question to Helen Zissou. Uh, at the very beginning, you said beautifully that uh, philosophy is in its noble aspect a kind of art in itself. Uh, I teach philosophy at the University in Vienna. And if I look around my colleagues, I'm not sure whether all philosophers of my department would share that definition which you gave right now. So my question to take it seriously is, how do you see, you spoke about uh, politics, about art, but how do you see the relation of your definition of philosophy, literature, uh, écriture féminine, to the world of academia and especially the interpretation that uh, philosophy is science and philosophy is not a kind of art. Uh, first of all, let me, let me um, underline that I'm not a philosopher. Uh, I'm a writer. And uh, you sh I mean, uh, you know, it goes around the world that I'm a philosopher, so I, I can't quarrel with everybody. <laughs> 
and sometimes I excuse myself uh, by remembering that Derrida would say that that's of course uh, um, a secret. He would say that um, uh, first of all, uh, there, are, there were so many philosophers who are not writers, which of course he thought was a pity. Um, uh, that uh, he thought that true philosophy had to be a writer's philosophy, or that uh, philosopher should be a writer. There were very few. Um, and then he would also uh, point to the fact that there were uh, writers who thought, <laughs> because there are so many writers who don't think, and that that is why. Uh, now and then, uh, a, a, a modest writer like me is mistaken for a philosopher. Because I, uh, I think that you cannot write without thinking. Uh, this, of course, is a way of belonging to what I call literature. It thinks, it thinks poetically and it thinks freely, more freely than philosophy. Philosophy has a, a, um, an ideal, a function, a, a duty. It's, it's supposed to somehow, now and then, try to demonstrate something, which I think is, uh, is both um, a noble vocation and, of course, uh, a terrible um, obstacle, uh, because you, you have to turn around all the time to check uh, and be sure that people follow you. Philosophy wants to be followed. And again, Derrida would tell me, you're not didactic. I am didactic. Mm -hmm. And it's true, he would, in his writing, he would uh, uh, inscribe variations on a leitmotiv or on a theme that uh, had appeared inside his writing. And he would repeat it 10 times so that he would be sure that he would be followed. Uh, a writer doesn't care about being followed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, as regards academia, I, I share your question. <laughs> I belong to the academia. Uh, I, I used to think, uh, actually I, I have always benefited by a privilege, which is that I myself founded the university where I've been teaching forever, which is Paris 8, the, the experimental university. Well, everybody taught, I mean, Deleuze, Foucault, except Derrida, uh, freely, uh, without uh, the injunctions of uh, academia. So you could go wrong, uh, you could uh, uh, dance in philosophy or uh, uh, joke, etc. Um, it's uh, everything that is prohibited was allowed. And I, I would think, uh, that was a long time ago, I thought if this university had not existed with its craziness and uh, its also its uh, uh, chaos, I don't know whether I would have stayed. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I could have, I, I, I don't even know whether I, I would have been allowed to uh, remain in a university. And I, 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 I remind you that when Derrida wanted to uh, enter the university, he couldn't. Uh, it was too late. He should have uh, uh, entered Paris 8, uh, which he didn't want to do. And when he later decided that he maybe would be more comfortable in university, he was uh, rejected. Um, simply because uh, what he has uh, brought to philosophy is uh, uh, a permanent earthquake, uh, which the institution doesn't like. Uh, so, uh, I think that, uh, and I'm sure, uh, uh, I'm sure that if you're here, it's because you're, you're able to uh, participate in earth shaking. And uh, this, of course, you, you you can uh, operate by means of uh, poetical language. <coughs> the, the, the great philosophies have always been poetic, poetical. Uh, I'm not
not sure I answer what you uh, what you're looking for, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd just like to know what to Berlin Sixus. My question would be, what's your personal relationship to the French language? Because it seems like it's always an important object, and it was always an important object in the writings of Derrida. My second question would be, uh, do you think that um, like the theory of difference is this theory is just so radical that it, can't, it goes even beyond feminism? Because I think, like, for me, it's just almost. Um, um, not very easy to understand what to explain to explain the fury uh, uh, the fury of difference. Sometimes I think it's just so radical that it, it goes beyond any kind of fury, any kind of political um, political movement, even uh, like feminism. And maybe the third question, but you all responded. Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the, the importance of the French language? Uh, no, it's not the French language, it's, it's language. It, is, um, uh, it, it happens that 